Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the all new Diatone F7 Mamba Stack. Now this one is a bit of a departure from their last 30x30 F405 stack, which I think is one of the cheapest F4 flight controllers and ESC combos out there, which is why I used it in my 100 GBP freestyle build, and it is really good. You can still get it for about $42, so I'll link it in the description of this video if you are interested. But I did have some gripes with it, which I I had to forgive due to the price of the product but this F7 stack addresses all of those things on paper and even though this one is $80 I still think that it's a pretty good deal considering what it potentially is going to bring in terms of new things to the table. So it comes in the same Mamba style round tub and if we look at the top of the lid there is a QR code which takes you to their manual download site. However, depending on what you want to do with it, you might not need that because if I remove the top of the foam packing, the stack comes already built with its standoffs fitted. but. Not only that, we've got a top plate with the pinouts already labelled up. Now, of course, this plate isn't designed to go on your copter, but I suppose you could fit it if you have the room and are trying to troubleshoot an issue in the field. Because if I lift that off, then some of the pads are labelled, but most of them are not. And that isn't a bad thing because I'd rather have more room for more pads and features than labels. Every pad has a through hole so they are accessible from both the top and the bottom of the board. First of all let's go through some of the specs which are written on the top plate. So as I mentioned it's an F7 chip which means it's more powerful than an F4 processor and it will allow us to do more things. But the biggest advantage of the F7 chip is that any UART can be inverted or uninverted just like the F3 boards so there's no more messing around especially when it comes to FR Sky with its inverted signal and inverted telemetry and that whole thing confused everybody else using Spectrum, FlySky and Crossfire and I think it even confused FR Sky users to some extent because why have we got a pad that is just for FR Sky? It didn't make sense. Now this next one I really wish the cheaper F4 stack had but I guess they were working to a really tight budget. So the F7 has a 5 volt regulator just like the F4 board which is fine for powering your FPV cam but most video transmitters apart from a select few require 7 volts and above and the 5 volt regulator on the budget stack was very noisy. In fact I plugged a 5 volt Unify into it and the picture was unusable. Although luckily Diatone sold a filter board especially for the Unify with a built in capacitor and buzzer which rectified that issue and I actually made a video on that. So I'll link to that in the below as well because this quad is still one of my main freestyle quads and the filter board is really cheap and it works really well with the Unify. However, I thought they should have put an 8 volt regulator on there like the Airbot F4 has because as I said most VTXs require 7 volts and above so if you didn't want to use the Unify and the filter board on the Mamba F4 you had to go with the VBAT which gave a little bit of noise through the video feed so this one has got a 9 volt regulator and its BEC is rated to 2 amps so we could power a VTX and a Cadex Turtle camera or a split style camera off that with no problems but if you are fairly new to this then you might be thinking why does a regulator stop noise reaching your video feed and the answer is actually it's not always guaranteed but essentially it adds an extra layer of filtering between the voltage spikes that are produced from the ESCs which can transfer to the flight controller especially if the flight controller is being powered directly 
from the LiPo, which is usually the case with these 4-in-1 ESC boards these days. However, if the ESCs don't have decent filtering, which usually comes in the form of ceramic capacitors, then even with a regulator you can still get video noise feeding through. Also, if the built-in regulator hasn't been implemented correctly, then a regulator can actually cause video noise itself. So the majority of regulators and flight controllers and PDBs these days use switching regulators. And without getting too technical, let's say your input voltage is a 4S 16.8 volts, the switching regulator will turn the input voltage on and off very quickly using a combination of four components so that the voltage rests to a particular value and this process in itself can emit RF noise if it's not implemented correctly. So I won't be able to confirm that the 9 volt regulator in this F7 board is any good until I try it in a model. This is why I've been a big fan of the Airbot F4, despite it being an F4, because in conjunction with the Teco 32 ESCs, the 8 volt regulator is perfect for any VTX. So sorry to steal your thunder diatone, but that is my current favourite combination for now when it comes to video noise. But listed under that is a 2812 LED controller, so as well as having a Betaflight LED pad, it has its own independent LED control function by a button on the side. Diatone have given me permission to use their video to show what the different modes do and you can see that there are various different settings as well as colours if you want to do that and the pads from those LED strips are conveniently placed in the corners of the board so that you can run them along the arms. So things are already sounding impressive, but then third one down is listed as Speedy B Bluetooth. And if you didn't see my reviews on the Speedy B Bluetooth adapters or the flight controller with it built in, then this F7 board also has Bluetooth built into it. Now, one of the problems with Bluetooth is that it runs on 2.4 gigahertz, which is the same frequency as most controllers with the exception of cross fire and R9 etc. However, the moment the copter arms, the Bluetooth is disabled so that it's not going to conflict with your controller while you are flying and that code is also built into the board so there's no special CLI command that has to be put into beta flight so if you upgrade beta flight then it's not going to screw that function up which is really good. And I know there are going to be a lot of people ready to hammer their keyboard saying Bluetooth is pointless and I can use my on-the-go cable. And to that I will say, well, on-the-go cables on my phone have a little bit of play in them. And I find that the SpeedyB app just constantly disconnects, so I prefer Bluetooth myself. But if on-the-go suits you, then maybe this flight controller isn't for you. Next on the list is a 16 megabyte data flash so you can do black box and troubleshoot any issues without the need of a micro SD card. And lastly it says 6S input which should probably be the second one down these days and not at the bottom but yes this combo is 3 to 6S capable. Now if I turn this board around we have more information. I'm not sure this is necessary other than UR4 and it states that UR1 is for S bus but with this being an F7 any free UART can support S bus whether inverted or uninverted. UR2 and UR3 are vacant but the important one is UR4 which is taken up by the Bluetooth function. So even though there are breakout pads for UR4, on the schematic they are telling you that it's not vacant. However, if you aren't too fussed about the Bluetooth, all you need to do is turn off the MSP and beta flight for the UR4 and then you can use the breakout pads to use it for something else. 
It's saying that UART 6 is for ESC telemetry and this one actually is worth taking note of because with this being a 4-in-1 ESC using a JST cable connecting directly to the flight controller, the ESC telemetry is hardwired to the UART 6. But again, if you aren't fussed about ESC telemetry, then there's nothing stopping you from de-pinning that JST wire and then using the breakout pads for something else. So let's go around the rest of the board starting at the top left we have pads for an external buzzer then next to that we have got a 9 volt ground and camera connection I was surprised to see the camera have a 9 volt pad and not a 5 volt pad because it's the norm to usually power the camera from 5 volts but most cameras will power up to 6S these days so I guess it's not a big deal then the next labels are actually for the ESC JST connector. So we have the current meter, then the RX6 for the ESC telemetry, as I mentioned earlier. And after that, we have the ESC motor connections. And I should mention, if you remove the JST wire underneath, you also have through holes. So you can solder the wires direct if you don't like these JST connectors, or if you have a pin break on one of the JST connectors then you still have the option to solder to it. We then have a VCC and ground connection if you need that for anything. I've already covered the corners for the LEDs so next we have a 5 volt and a 9 volt pad along with their corresponding ground pads. I think I would like to have seen the VTX pad next to the voltage pad rather than the TX3 which is going to be for your smart audio or tramp audio but perhaps they have a reason that they have separated them maybe for noise purposes I don't know. Then the computer label is just for the USB port and after that as I mentioned earlier we have got the usual beta flight 5 volt ground and LED pad if you don't want to use their custom programming button. And onto the other side we have the RX and TX6 if you want to use them for something else instead of ESC telemetry along with the vacant RX and TX5 followed by the RX4 and TX4 if you aren't fussed about Bluetooth and disable the MSP in Betaflight like I mentioned earlier. Then we have another TX and RX3 with a 5 volt and ground. Maybe this is placed here if you want to do GPS but in the manual they have just left them free with no label as what you would use them for. I've already gone over the LED button but underneath we've got a label called BOOM. Now don't worry because Diatone have confirmed that this is just a spelling mistake and it should say BOOT. So if the flight controller gets bricked or you are having trouble getting it into DFU mode then that is what the BOOM button is for. Then we have the vacant UART2 and lastly we have SBUS. PPM 5 volt and ground but again as this is an F7 board S bus can be both inverted and uninverted so really it should just say RX. The flight controller is soft mounted with rubber grommets and the holes are M3 size standoffs. It's come flash with beta flight version 3.55 which I personally think is a good move. I'm struggling to adapt to beta flight 4 and it doesn't quite feel right to me. It seems geared more towards 5 inch and I struggle to get a nice tune out of smaller models. The flight controller has the MPU 6000 which is fine because Beta Flight has done away with 32 kilohertz and I've always found the MPU 6000 to be the most stable and less susceptible to noise and vibrations compared to others. The ESCs this time are a 4M1 32-bit supporting D-Shop 1200 and are rated to 50 amp with a 55 amp burst. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you if that rating is for 6S or 4S, but I always assume that it's for 4S because 4S demands more current. So the 6S current rating will be two-thirds of a 4S current rating, which makes each ESC 33.3 amps reoccurring for a 6S. So if you 
use this stack on a 5 inch and if we times that by 4 because we have 4 motors then that's 132 amps for a 6S and if we are drawing 132 amps on a 6S then you are doing 6S wrong on a 5 inch so these ESCs should be well within the tolerance regardless of the uncertain information regarding on the amp rating. There's also some nice touches on the ESCs as well. Each motor solder pad is labelled up. I would recommend disassembling the stack to solder the motor wires to the pads, otherwise you will mount the nylon standoffs. There's also a nice label on the JST connector underneath telling you what each pin relates to. Then lastly, in the tub we have a bunch of rubber o-rings for further soft mounting if it's needed as well as a spare JST cable for the 4-in-1 ESC connector to the flight controller. We've got an XT60 connector along with some 14 gauge wire although the wire is quite short I would have liked to have seen it being a little bit longer. Then lastly we have what looks like a genuine Panasonic 35 volt 470 microfarad low ASR capacitor. The instructions say to use this if you intend to use 6S, however I'd solder it up to the battery terminals regardless. I'm surprised to see that it's only rated to 35 volts, as with 6S, voltage spikes can be double that of the input voltage which is going to be 25.2 volts on a 6S, so I always tend to use a 50 volt capacitor for 6S. But if the ESCs have enough filtering to cope with the voltage spikes itself then perhaps the smaller rated capacitor is all that is needed. There is a couple of things that you need to know about these types of capacitors though. They have a liquid inside them and over time this dries up and it's always best to have an ESR meter and I've got one on order because I've got some models that are aging now. But also there are a lot of useful useless fakes out there so all I can say for the moment is that it has all of the correct markings on it and looks genuine until it goes on a quad I will leave it there but I will link to the product in the description of this video I hope you found this information useful and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers